ladies. How's it going today so far? Mm, Thanks. Good. How are you doing? I, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, thank you for the film. Um, Ellie, got to start with you because um, we know you here in Toronto, of course, for your stage work, everything that you've done, you know, in the theater. Now you're transition transitioning to the big screen. And so I wanted to ask, let's start first of all with where this came from. Like, where did this idea come from or and how personal was it for you? Um, I mean, not personal in the sense of like, it's not autobiographical. Um, I haven't put myself up for adult adoption. I didn't age out of the foster care system. Yeah. You know, personal in terms of like, I have a way into the subject matter. Um, and a lot of the, you know, there's there's a seed of emotion that's personal. Right. Um, but then, you know, extrapolated into a completely fictional story. Um, yeah, it's, it's very interesting to think about it because um, I, I watched a movie, I think it was like last year, uh, Adopting Audrey. Have you seen that film? No. Hey, check it out. Um, it's with Jenna. Oh my God. Now, of course, I'm blanking on her name. The actress, <laughs> Jenna. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I've just gone blank. But anyway, check it out because it really, I had to go back and watch my interview with her because it, it really reminded me a lot of that. So check it out. It's, it's called Adopting Audrey, but it was good. But what I liked about this one too is that you really feel for Rosie. Like she's she's got so much anxiety. There's so much going on with her. Um, you just want to give her a big hug. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure. Um, and Karen, for you, um, how did you connect with with Ellie? How did this, you know, all start? Were you watching one of her plays and thought we we got to do something together? <laughs> Actually, you nailed it. I can't believe how accurate the description of our meeting was. Um, I was actually, I was watching a show at the Crows Theater um, called Asking For It, which was one of Ellie's first plays. Um, and I remember being in the audience and like, it, she also performed in this particular piece um, and just thinking like, oh my God, here is another Toronto creative that I must work with. So I DM'd her on Twitter, like, right after I got out of the show and I was like, we have to meet up. Let's find something to work on. And uh, it took us a little while to figure out what exactly that was going to be, but ended up being in the film world. Um, and I think we're both pretty excited that uh, we've been able to make this piece together. Yeah. And it, it's had kind of a long evolution because you guys were supposed to shoot literally like what, a day before COVID started. And then, <laughs> Feels uh oh, okay. we're going to have sideline here you know so yeah. Karen first of all as a filmmaker what's that like for you like once you know everything's been budgeted and you're ready to go and then the world stops I mean it's so funny like it happens all the time in movie land like COVID irrespective that everything can sort of line up and all the financing is in place casting's done the crew is hired da 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 and then force measure, whatever it is, a studio pulls out or you lose an actor or whatever. And I'm just sort of learning more and more now as you know, you know, cause it's been almost two years since we made this film. Yeah. That, um, nothing is a sure bet. Like the saying goes, nothing's a sure bet until you're wrapping for lunch on the first day. I believe that nothing is a sure bet until your ass is sitting in the seat watching <laughs> a movie for the first time at your premiere. And then you made a movie. Congratulations. It's done. Okay. And everybody can walk on it and it can happen. So, I mean, it's, it was an interesting uh, lesson to learn as a filmmaker when we were making adult adoption, because it was sort of like, you know, this was my first feature. So I was like, I was so in it. I was so ready to go. Um, so prepared. And then to sort of like have the rug pulled out from under you right before you go to camera. It is, it's a wild experience, but I think it's like, pretty par for the course in this wild industry right. um, and it was kind of like you know everybody felt that way at the beginning of the pandemic like people's weddings were canceled proms sure. were canceled yeah like, I feel like I feel like the least of the worries was that like our small like it felt monumental at the time I was like of course oh, awful but in the grand scheme of things I'm sure people <laughs> much more uh impactful sort of delays in their yeah. lives yeah you know, understood yeah. for sure for sure I get it um Ellie I want to ask you how you know the, the script was written it's, it was like you say it was all ready to to go and then you guys are in isolation you know how did it help or did it change or influence when you did start to shoot did it have any influence on like the loneliness that Rosie felt 
Mm. Um, or did it not have any impact? No, no, absolutely. Um, I've thought about that a lot, actually, how when I wrote the script, um, you know, I think it was it would have been a relatable um, movie, whether or not the pandemic had happened, but the pandemic happening all of a sudden made a movie about loneliness and desire for connection just so much more, you know, in the zeitgeist. Right. And so that did inform things. I mean, I remember feeling so, um, like when I was on set, so kind of like stimulated by being in a in-person workplace around so many other people for the first right. time. And yeah. almost feeling like a sensory overload, but then realizing like, that's pretty perfect for the character. Like I could really use that. So yeah. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. And I have to I have to say that there's nothing like a good bowl of craft dinner. <laughs> yep, yep, well, you feel that way. <laughs> I don't so actually I, like craft okay. dinner myself. My but... is not stocked like hers, you know, that's all she eats pretty much. But um, is that something that you ate a lot as a kid? gotta know no actually that's um and I can't really stand it like even when I had to eat it for the thing I was like oh do I have to and Knox was like well you wrote it <laughs> so yes um yeah that that was just uh just well I wanted to think about the like you know the childhood foods the foods that would be emblematic of someone's childhood and it's oh, not of mine but <laughs> yeah 100 oh that's funny okay that, that's really funny um Karen tell me a little bit about the connection between you and Ellie once you started to work together and and you know why did it work so well you know what was your collaboration like between the two of you well I think um most uh beautiful artistic collaborations um, come from a place of uh, sincere trust and respect from both artists. Um, and Ellie was so generous with me in entrusting me with this script that she had written um, and for, you know, taking a chance on both of us going into our first feature for the first time together. Right. So I think it was, I think we both like neither of us were coming from a place of like, we've done this before, we know how to, like, we've got our style set, like we know how to do this. Um, and so there was a real collaborative uh, generosity with one another when it came to um, the amount of trust that we gave to one another. Um, and I think like, you know, we would we would text a lot late at night about small things mm. um, that were coming to us like as we were shooting on the day. And I think that you know, when you're in the vortex of set, which is like this intense period of artistic output after months and months and months and months and months of, um, of pre-production, uh, it is this sort of, you know, um, uh, climax or uh, crescendo of, of all of that work that you've done in the past. Right. And I think that we really just let ourselves crescendo during that filming period. Yeah. Um, it was just like a total like outpouring because this movie, you know, because we were delayed by a full year because of the pandemic, it kind of was bursting out of us. Sure. And we both just sort of let the burst go. <laughs> and I think that that was um, really fulfilling and uh, a really sort of remarkable um, experience in terms of of what it meant uh for the two of us being able to work together and bounce ideas off of each other and and take that journey together oh nice really uh, yeah it's great yeah it really it really showed on screen and you know ellie for you was it a hard transition to go from the stage to screen or was it just no problem um you know it wasn't that hard um in part in large part because i really 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 trusted my director of course um you know i had no idea what what i was doing was going to look like like i didn't watch dailies at the end of the day um and of course rosie is such a challenging character <laughs> such a challenging character to play because She's not in her body. She doesn't really take other people in initially. She doesn't really right. breathe. And when you go to acting school and when you act, you're told those are the kind of key tenets for being a good actor. And those are the things you check in with yourself or I do after a performance. I'm like, okay, was I listening? Was I taking the other person in? Was I breathing? Um, yeah. And Rosie doesn't do any of those things. Right. So, um, you know, the, the performance really depended on me just checking in with Knox saying, is this too much? Is this too little? Like, really relying on the director and then beyond that it didn't feel like a huge difference to be honest from stage right. yeah exactly so at the end like after doing this and I, do you think like an adult adoption could actually really work I mean there are people out there who've done it I know that there are you know like 
Um, maybe not just somebody from foster home, maybe they've lost their parents, you know, or whatever, but is it something that you think could work? Because to me, like when I'm watching, you know, her character, especially when she meets up with the, with the guy who could potentially be her father, but then it doesn't go that way. Like I got that kind of icky feeling, you know? Um, <laughs> so I don't know. How do you know you can trust somebody? How do you, it's, it's an interesting topic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, much like any relationship, I think, um, I think it can work. Absolutely. And then I think it can go sideways as well. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And I think yeah, Karen. Yeah. Of, well, I think one of the things that, you know, that the film, I think beautifully showcases and it's credit to Ali's writing is that, uh, you can't, as with any relationship, you can't trust that this person is not going to hurt you. And it's the same way I think with, with, um, with an adult child relationship that is a biological, um, child and parent, um, you know, you never know what you're going to get. And I think um, coming to terms with the fact that uh, accepting one another um, as individuals and as humans who are ultimately flawed, mm. I think one of the larger mes messages of the film um, in that there is both discomfort in accepting that truth and comfort in accepting that truth because it's a constant that you're always going to be contending with. So right. unconditional love maybe doesn't really exist, but it's okay because <laughs> you can take comfort in the fact that uh, there is consistency in that inconsistency. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, it really, really makes you think. Did you want to add something, Ellie? That? Yeah, no, unconditional love is like the subject that I feel like we spent so much time talking about. And it's like it doesn't exist in a person. It doesn't exist uh, in a relationship. And yet it exists in the world, I feel right. like is something that I learned from doing this movie. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, it really was great. I, I thought you guys did a really, really good job on it. And I just want to thank you so much for your time today and, and thank best you. of luck with it. So thank you thank so you. much. I appreciate thank it. You Thanks for your lot. questions. Okay, guys. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.